Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at an oldie but a goodie. This is the Cooler Master Masterbox MB511. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at the Masterbox MB511. This is in the red version. There's actually a few versions of this case available on the market, but at the time of recording, this one is possibly one of the cheapest ATX format cases in the UK right now. It actually is a pretty decent case. Now you can get it in red, blue, white, and black. And also there are addressable RGB versions as well, which come included with addressable RGB fans, etc. But with all of those things included, you're looking at somewhere nearly a hundred pounds in some places for this case. This is currently in the red version available on Amazon for somewhere in the region of about £50. So this video may or may not age very well depending on when you're watching it. This case itself is actually somewhere in the region of about four years old now. And actually when it first came out I was intrigued by it but something which put me off was the side panel which is 100% acrylic. Which for most of us we kind of tend to shun that a little bit in favour of tempered glass. But with things as they are, money being tight and there not being a great deal of flexibility on the market and prices being absolutely ludicrous I thought it was time to give this one a little look. So today we're going to go through do a tear down of the case go through all the pros and cons and there will be a follow-up video with a build going into this I'm not entirely sure what as of yet. Um, I'm still slightly put off by the side panel being plastic I'm guessing it may put off some potential buyers but let me know what you think in the comments section below but with that said let's get on with it. So to start off with, looking at the specifications, so this is an ATX style case. It will actually fit an E-ATX motherboard. There's an absolute ton of room in there. Up front, you have got this nice mesh finish on the front, and the mesh itself is actually a very tight mesh. So although it looks like it's gonna be great for airflow, it's not gonna be a very high airflow, but it certainly will let airflow. But the benefit of this tight mesh is dust filtration. And that goes for the side panels as well. You've got removable side panels there, which have got the accent color of red. Those on the other case models, so if you get the black version, those will be blacked out, etc., etc. You get the general idea. But you can fit in here three 120 mil fans if you want to, also a 360 mil radiator, and if you want to, you can just put in two 140 mil fans. Although the cutouts behind might make that look a little bit weird, we'll see that shortly when I take the front panel off. Other things of note on the front panel, there is filtration basically everywhere, even underneath where the grab handle is. There's a filter in there also. You've got the Cooler Master logo in the middle. And at the top here, we've got all of the front panel I.O., which we'll give you a closer look at. So you've got two USB 3.0s. You've got the illuminated power button in the middle. You've also got a separate headphone and mic jack. And on the far side, you have a reset button. Now, Cooler Master have done some variations of this particular case with different setups. So either with a USB type C or with ARGB buttons, that sort of stuff. But for this particular model, you are stuck with this. So if you do decide you want to do RGB lighting, you will need a separate controller. There's none built into the case. Taking the front panel off is a relatively straightforward thing to do. There is a grab handle on the bottom, so a little pull, and this part comes off. It is very, very plasticky. There's uh, basically no metal in here at all, other than this mesh section on the front. But these bits on the side are removable, as you can see there. So this actually highlights very nicely in red. There's a little latch at the top. Pull the latch up, pull that out, and then you can take it out for cleaning purposes, etc. or if you want to, leave it out altogether if red isn't your thing. But overall, yeah, pretty decent, and there's a, a lot of filtration going on. At the bottom, where the grab handle is, there is also another removable filter, which you can take out there, and that is basically filtering all incoming air. With the front panel out of the way, we can now take a look closer inside. So as you can see, back in the days when this case came out, four years ago, 140 mil fans weren't particularly um, available on the market. There were a few, but very far and few between. So they have got cutouts for 120 mils there. They have got the actual bits there. So if you want to put 140s in, you can do, but there'll be somewhat of an offset. So this is kind of going to be blocking majority of the fans. I think personally, 120s are the way to go with this. Obviously, if you want to, you can put radiators in here as well. So if you want to, you can mount the fans on the front of the case and put the radiator behind or put the radiator and the fans behind should you wish to. The choice is up to you. There's an awful lot of depth behind there. So you can choose to do either. And also because of how much the front panel sticks out, as you can see, this area here, this sticks out quite a lot. So if you want to mount the fans on the front and have them closer to the outer edge, you can do, or if you want them slightly more recessed, then you can put them behind. So taking a look at the side panel. So this is the uh, tempered glass effect acrylic side panel held on with four thumb screws. And there are also 
rubber grommets there. One of the downsides about this is when you take the screws out, there's no ledge or anything, so the, uh, the panel basically kind of falls off, so do be careful. It's not gonna be as bad with tempered glass, but there is a potential for this to fall off and get damaged. It is only acrylic, so it may scratch quite easily, and if it does scratch, it's gonna be a right pain to polish out. So taking a look inside, you can see this is extremely cavernous. It's got a very deep section to it. You can put graphics cards in here of up to somewhere in the region about 400 mil, depending on your configuration for fans and radiators in the front. You can see from B-roll, there's a, a ruler I've put in here so you can see the exact measurements and all that kind of stuff so you can get an idea of what will physically fit in here. When it comes to things like power supplies, 180 mil power supply, CPU coolers, heights of up to 165 mil, and graphics cards, yeah, like I said up to about 400 mil, which is absolutely huge. So you're probably gonna be seeing some B-roll of this front section here, where you can see the gap there. There's somewhere in the region of about 80 mil of gap there, so if you're looking at putting a 360 mil radiator in this section behind, you can do, and the fans as well, and potentially you could set up a push-pull with fans in the front, radiator sandwich in the middle, and fans behind. The basement section is recessed quite nicely in that respect. F looking further back at the actual basement, so you've got some cutouts at the top for putting your cables through. They're really nice and deep as well, so even if you do have a power supply installed, there's still gonna be plenty of room there. You've also got on top the option to mount a two and a half inch drive on this little sled, so you can put it in two positions. Sadly, they only provide you with one of these. I'm guessing if you want to, you could get hold of one of those somewhere. I imagine eBay or possibly even Cooler Masters customer support may be able to help you out there should you want to. I do feel that SSDs now are becoming slightly less favorable, especially now M.2s are pretty much the same price, so that is something which is not a great concern that there's only one of those. On the back, you've got all fully removable PCI Express slot covers, which is really nice to see, and it's all nicely ventilated as well. You've also got a 120 mil fan included, no RGB, just a plain fan, and it isn't even PWM, it's just three pin voltage control, but I guess it's better than nothing. I think with this, where it leads you is the fact that this is kind of like your starting canvas and it's for you to kind of paint whatever you want into it. So if you want to add nice bright RGB fans in there, addressable RGB, you can do. Or if you want a more stealthy look, you can put in some plain fans, maybe some Arctic P12s, that sort of thing. And you can have yourself a really nice little stealthy setup. Pass-throughs there for all your cables, no rubber grommets or anything. Again, this is relatively inexpensive in this particular form. Again, if you go for the ARGB version, then you're gonna be paying a lot more, but basically for the fans. When it comes to the cutout at the back there, huge cutout, so if you wanna add a custom cooler, very easy to get to the back of your motherboard, etc. And at the top, there's a little bit of extra room height-wise between the motherboard top and the pass-through, so that's pretty handy, although not a great deal. So if you are putting a top-mounted radiator, you are gonna be limited to 240 mil, 120s or 240s are fine, Physically, fan-wise, you can put 120s or 140s, but a 280 radiator is just gonna come down too far and you're basically gonna crush the top of your motherboard, so that isn't gonna be possible. And having said that, even with a 240 mil rad, even though it is slightly offset, you are gonna be looking at possibly hindering your VRMs or potentially your RGB RAM if you have RGB RAM installed. Moving around to the back, so you can see our fan, which is enclosed there. A little bit of movement up and down, not a great deal. Uh, no option for a 140, sadly. You've got your IO shield cover there, PCI Express slots, as we said, a little bit of extra ventilation on the side. Mounting on the bottom for a full-size ATX power supply, as you'd expect. Moving around to the back, we've got the back panel, which is held on with thumb screws, not captive ones. And the back panel actually is pretty solid as well, which is nice to see. And then we can take a look inside the back panel. So as we said, massive cutout there for getting access to your CPU cooler back parts, that sort of stuff. We've also got some rubber grommets which fit into this section here. So this is for mounting uh, two and a half inch drives again, either SSDs or mechanical drives. Nice that there's rubber grommets. I've actually pushed those through. You'll probably see for some B-roll, they do come included in the accessories bag. But I've pushed them through so you can kind of work out where they go. We've also got loads of tie down points for cable ties, etc. And speaking of which, actually in the box, you get about 10 cable ties, which is awesome. You also get a proper manual to tell you how it all goes together and what screws fit where. And also you get a bag of accessories, screws, pass-throughs, all that kind of stuff. So all of that is included as well. Back to the case, again, loads of pass-throughs for EPS connectors at the top there, nice and easy to get to. Full-size basement for power supply and also rubber grommets as well to absorb any noise from power supplies that you're installing. You've also got a hard drive cage section here. So two cages in there 
and both of these, this is a bit of a blast from the past, so you press this in and you can extend it out, put your drive in and then clasp it back together, that holds the drive in place. Or there's screw holes and also if you're using a two and a half inch drive you can screw through the bottom. Two of those included. The drive cage itself has got a couple of screws on it but it isn't actually removable. It is riveted in place so unfortunately not a great deal you can do with that but it is spaced back far enough again in line with the basement section so if you are putting a larger radiator in there it isn't going to be too much of a problem. When it comes to connectivity usual kind of deal so you've got two USB 3.0s nicely blacked out. You've also got a HD audio not quite so blacked out and there are the usual front panel io connections for power switch reset switch hard drive led and power led moving down to the bottom usual kind of a deal here so we've got one of these flimsy filters which uh, just slots in or slots out hexagonal mesh on the bottom which is always nice to see here you can see there is two screws there for the hard drive cage but it's riveted on that side so kind of pointless really but i guess if you wanted to you could drill out the rivets to remove it little bit of a pain but potentially it is possible rubberized feet on the bottom as well which is always nice to see and that is pretty much it for the bottom moving back to the top so you can see our exposed io so the io is actually captive into the case so when you take off the front panel you don't have to worry about your wiring which is always a good thing and on the top you've got a full width filter on there which is magnetic and removable as you'd expect these days and you can see here we've got this nice hexagonal mesh again which follows through you also got mounting areas for 120 fans or 140s if you want to take a bit wider again if you're putting a radiator in here 240 is the most i would recommend and there we go we've got it put back together i haven't put the acrylic on the side because i well it's just acrylic and it drives me nuts it's a real shame this case would be kind of almost perfect if it had a glass side panel rather than that acrylic one for 50 pounds i think they've got a cracking deal and especially in the economic climate that we find ourselves in currently the design is a little bit dated i feel because of these kind of swept back sections here it's kind of very very much of its time but overall i think it's actually a really nice looking case cooler master did actually a cracking job with this they pretty much ticked all the boxes this point i would normally be showing you addressable rgb lighting and how it all looks but obviously this doesn't have any so i won't be showing you that but obviously like i said if you do want to see what this case is like when we do stick some stuff in there some fans a full system etc do some temperature tests then please do click on the subscribe button and the chime icon i've been inside of future video releases so i think realistically this case as far as i'm concerned is the perfect flippers case because the fact that it has got that plastic side panel when you're taking your pictures when you've got your built system in here posting pictures people aren't really going to be able to tell that it's plastic not glass and by the time they come around have a look at the pc see it all running etc they're probably not going to care less because it's going to look nice and it's going to be at a decent price because you've saved a few quid on the case itself so i think for me definitely in terms of this case if you're looking to build a cheap system and flip it on then i think this ticks a lot of boxes if you're looking at it to keep for long term i do feel that the side panel the acrylic is going to chip and crack and get all those kind of micro scratches I know this because we've previously done the Q300L and the Masterbox Lite 3.1, both which had acrylic panels, and they are eventually a pain in the backside unless you take particular care of them or just leave the protective sleeve on them, which looks a little bit naff. But anyway, like I said, let me know what you think about this one in the comment section. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.